Good morning, everybody, and it's time Drivers, here today for the cars. time here today for the veteran shootout. Uh, yesterday was the Young Gun Challenge, in which um oh boy, I just forgot who won that race. Oh boy, this is awful. But um, uh, Chris Washer will take the pole today here in the veteran shootout, 24 car field, by the way. He was outside as Ian Dutta in the 18. Then you have Andy Timmons in the 10s, rolling off from 3rd. And then Sky Commons in the 17, rolling off from 4th. Rendering out the top 5 is Megan Atkins. She rolls off from 5th. Dylan Poteed is rolling off from 6th. 7th is Drew Austin. 8th is Preston Plord. 9th is Cody Lamas. 10th is Ricky Falcon. 11th is James Silverfox. 12th is Dougie Shears. 13th is Dylan Young. 14th is Madison Sieber. 15th is Gold Alley, 16th is Piju London, 17th is Dreams Qualls, 18th is Alex Tanker, 19th is Justin Perry, 20th is Michael Hegdahl, 21st is Dion Scott, 22nd is Seth Cole, 23rd is Sean Galligan, and in 24th, in the 24th car, is Charles Sanford. Then a nice look at the Sheriff Dodge Charger for today's race. Kind of cool how they... Switch out all the pace cars from uh, time to time. But like I said, this time it's a 60 lap event. So quite a much longer event here at Daytona. Uh, hopefully we won't see wrecks until maybe the mid portion of the race. That way we have a big enough pack of cars to maybe finish out the race. If not, then oh well. But um, we're going to see who's going to come out on top at the end of the day. In this field, we're going to take a look at the teammates we have in this field here. Chris Washer didn't... Oh, now it came back to me. Nick Pericles, Chris Washer's teammate, won the race yesterday. He, and obviously, he was in the race yesterday. Ian Dutta's two teammates, Jamie Malone and James Qualls. Jamie Malone was in the yesterday's event, and James Qualls is uh, towards the back of this pack. Andy Timmons' teammates is the 4 and the 41. 4 and the 41 in this field today. Dougie Shears and James Silverfox. Yeah, and um, I just lost it. Uh, Tony Blazer was in the race yesterday. In the 17, Sky Commons, he has two team. He has two teammates, uh, 16 and the 99, Preston Plard and uh, Pichu London. Then Megan Atkins has a couple teammates. I think a couple teammates in this field today. No, 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 no just one teammate, Ricky Falcon. Her other two teammates... Um, oh, and Madison Sieber, too. My mistake. And uh, her other two teammates at um, at uh, Atkins Motorsports, that's been the, the official name for them. Uh, they are Rachel Atkins and um, that might be it. I don't know, but it may be. And, and Caitlin Dollerton. So the only I think the only five-car team in this group. Uh, Dylan Poteet's got two teammates in this Field, Sean Galligan at the back of the pack, and Seth Cole for Tweenix Racing. Um, Drew Austin is a single-car race team. Um, Cody Lamas has two teammates, Charles Sanford and Cole Daly. And uh, their other teammate, Tim Fralick, is in, um, was in the race yesterday. And then, of course, two Stuart Haas cars, then Madison Sieber. Dylan Young's got a teammate in the two car of... Um, I thought I had a two car here somewhere. Oh, that's right. Daniel Day uh, was yesterday's in yesterday's race, and of course Cole Daly, um, James Qualls, Alex Tanker, his teammate Jordan Culp. No, I'm sorry. That's a, that's my mistake. I made that mistake again. Ooh, lots of mistakes early on here. He's a single car race team. Austin, Jer Justin Perry. Ooh, ooh, maybe I should have done this in the afternoon. Justin Perry. He's a single car race team. Um, Michael Hegdahl's teammate Calvin Malone was in the race yesterday. Uh, Deion Scott, single car race team. Seth Cole for Tweenix. Sean Gallican for Tweenix. And Charles Sanford for Hendrick. So, as I said, it's a 24 car pack, 60 laps. And uh, it's going to be a crazy, crazy race today. Hopefully no wrecks until the middle portion of the race, but we'll have to see what happens here. So we're 20 seconds from the command to fire the engines here on Fox. Thank you for watching the pre Thank you for watching the opening here. And uh, here we go. We're going to get ready for the command to fire the engines at Daytona here in the veteran shootout. Help me get this party started. Drivers! 
Start your engines! Uh, I hope the sound will n hopefully uh, blare over the drivers. I, I don't know if they will or not, but hope I will. <laughs> Hang on, maybe if I adjust the volume here, it might be a little better. As I said, sorry for the glitching there, just trying to adjust the volume. As I said, Chris Washer is the bull setter in the Twisted Tea colors. And uh, in the Skittle colors, Andy Timmons and Aspen Dental. Um, I think the 17 is in the 5th, 3rd colors. And Megan Atkins in Shore Lodge, in the Shore Lodge colors. Ford, Toyota, Chevy, Ford, Chevy. So two Fords, one Toyota, two Chevy, so... Nearest Toyota for um, the 18 to work with is way back here. Oh wow, way back here. Nearest Toyota for the 18 to work with is the his teammate James Qualls. In fact, they're the only two Toyotas in this field. Lots of Chevys in this field. We're gonna have to see what happens here. So here we go. No one had mechanical trouble on the pace lap. The Sheriff Dodge Charger is going to make a hard left-hand turn, and we are ready to get this get this race going. Here we go. Chris Washer leads him down. Still double wide entering turn number. Still double wide entering turn number one. No one has yet decided to go out three wide. But the 10's gonna suck right up to the back of the nine. See if he can, if he can make any moves on the nine. And it looks like he will move into the inside. Only two females in this field, Megan Atkins and Chris Walk. And not, oh boy, he's gonna hate that. Um, Megan Atkins and Madison Sieber are the only two as Andy Timmons is now going for the lead. Maybe peek up high, come back down. No, Megan Atkins. Keep letting Megan Atkins in. He'll lead lap one. They w now they're getting three wide. Here we go. Oh man, Preston Florida's got it in the back of Dylan Poteet back there, but they keep it together. Who lost it to the lead? I'm hoping these guys keep it together and not wreck so early in this race. <coughs> Unlike the uh, Rhythm Challenge, but like a nice big pack in this race. But oh boy, they are four wide. They're gonna be four wide coming off of four two, and Silver Fox is wrecked in the front of the pack. But it looks like a lot of cars may try to get through. Oh no! And Drew Austin, leading last time around, is on his lid. How many cars involved? Silver Fox was the first car I saw around, but it doesn't look like he has damage. Chris Washer, P2 London. Looks like Sky Commons made it through, and same for Dion Scott. Ricky Falcons got damage. Preston Ford looks clean. So does Michael Hegdahl and Alex Tanker and Madison Sieber. Uh, Doug Shears has got some right side damage. Seth Cole may have right side damage, and no damage to the rear of uh, Charles Stanford. Dylan Poti. I think he has a little buckle on the hood there. Nope, that's actually on every car. No, so he's fine. Continuing to go back through here. Who else involved? Peter London, as I said. Megan Atkins was on her side. Ian Dutta has blown up. Drew Austin's already taken his car out of the race. Andy Timmons and Ian Dutta, they're done. And that's it. So, basically, cars involved. Andy Timmons, Ian Dutta, Megan Atkins, Peter London, James Silverfox... Uh, Chris Washer uh, and Ricky Falcon by the looks of it 
No, these three guys, everybody that's hitting pit road was involved. <coughs> but it doesn't look like Sky Cummins and Neon Scott have too much damage. And, oh, wait a minute, was that Seth Cole? No, he was on the racetrack, okay. And the leader at the line, 200 cars leading the way. Leading the way, uh, Cody Lamas was the leader. Is the leader, Cold Alley is second, third is Dylan Young, fourth is James Qualls, fifth Justin Perry, sixth is Sean Galligan, seventh is Dylan Poteet, eighth is Seth Cole, ninth is Madison Seaburn, and tenth is Alex Tanker. We're going to go ahead and take a look back, uh, take a look at a lot of replays of what happened to bring out the first caution of the day. Now James Silverfox was the first car I saw around, and it looks like Megan Atkins came down into the 78 of Drew Austin, sending them down into Dylan Young, who did a good job of bringing it down below the line. And, oh, Andy Timmons was just, he was so close to making it. Did not quite make it. Did Silver Fox ever get the wall? He, I thought he just slid. Uh, Drew Austin on his side. Megan Atkins was on her lid. Andy Timmons was on top of Dylan Poteet for a second. Got down into Dion. So Dion did get some damage from the wreck. Dylan Poteet may have a little bit of damage. And then Ian Dutta got sent around. And, and who's he going to hit here? Just got by Dylan Poteet as the wreck continues on to spew behind him. We'll take a lot of re looks at this, folks, to see uh, to pinpoint all the mess here. Uh, how did how did Chris Washer get involved? Oh, he got turned by Preston Plort originally, and then a little boot from the 27. That's what him, sent him down into Dougie Shears and Madison Sieber. Drew Austin's gonna barrel roll down the front stretch. How did a lot of these? How did a lot of these guys not get involved? Like Michael Hegdahl and uh, Alex Tanker. How did they not get involved? And I found that amazing. We'll take a look at another aspect of the wreck. This time from Andy Timmons' point of view. We'll look at a different camera angle here. We'll look at TV two. So they come off four here. As you can see there. Drew Austin and Megan Atkins make contact. That sends them down into Silver Fox and Dylan Young. As Cody Lamas drives away, and then they're going to come back up, up in Andy Timmons, and that's what's going to spawn the wreck. Ian Dutta almost came down into his teammate. So Megan Atkins will flip over a couple times on top of the 78 and the 10. 42 just slides through there. And, then the, and when the 33 was going over, that's what sent Drew Austin over. So we'll, let's take a look at how what happened in here with Drew. He's just going to keep flipping and gets a boot from Ricky Falcon. Megan ends up back on all fours. But Drew here is going to slide down the front stretch. Back into Megan Atkins. And then down into Mary... No, no, not Mary. Um, teen. And that's how Pichu London got a lot of damage, slammed into the side of, uh, slammed into the side of um, Andy Timmons. So that's why Andy Timmons started blowing up. So lots of cars. Well, we're gonna take a lot of onboards here, folks. Uh, first, we'll take a ride with the ten of Andy Timmons. On board with Andy Timmons in the ten Aspen Dental Chevy SS. <laughs> Okay, at the 33, and there's the hit from the 90 from the 99. And Andy Timmons not finished by the 33. He may still be continuing. So uh, we'll take another, another look on the board this time with the 33 of Megan Atkins. On board with the 33 Shore Lodge Chevrolet SS of Megan Atkins. <laughs> One final on board with um, James Silverfox just to see um, what the issue is. Okay, maybe not one final on board. We'll take one with Silverfox and Drew Austin. 
on board with James Silverfox to see just if he ever hit the wall or not or any other cars and see um, if he just got spun around. Couple a hit from Sky Common, but then look like he has much damage to the 41 here. So we'll take one final on board with the 78. One final on board with Drew Austin in the 78 Furniture Row Chevrolet. I guess that's when we lost our camera, so uh, tough ride for Drew Austin, and uh, we're now going to get ready to get back to green flag racing here at Daytona. Lights are out of top of the pace car, that means we'll get back to green with lap 7 of 60, that should give us 54 laps to go. Cody Lamas, I said, of course, was the leader, second is Cole Daly, third Dylan Young, fourth James Coles, and fifth is Justin Perry, sixth is Sean Galligan, seventh is... Dylan Poteet, 8th is Seth Cole, 9th is Madison Siebert, and 10th is Alex Tanker. As for the cars out of the race, Ricky Falcon out in 19th, 20th is Peter London out of the race, 21st, Megan Atkins, 22nd is Ian Dutta. Sorry about that. And then 23rd is Andy Timmons in out of and 24th was Drew Austin. So just six cars out of the race, so not awfully bad. 18 cars left to finish this race. And uh, the rest of the field is uh, Michael Hegdahl in 11th, 12th, Thrust Implored, 13th, Chris Washer, 14th is Charles Sanford, 15th is Guy Commons, 16th is James Silverfox, 17th, Dougie Shears, and 18th is Dion Scott. I don't think anyone would be off the pace since most of the cars have their damage repaired. Cody Lamas in Cold Alley, Hendrick Motorsports 1-2, and they still have all three of their cars in this race. James Qualls has lost his teammate. We're going to see what happens here. Long race still to go. <laughs> Pace car is going to pull down into the pits. We're going to get ready to get back to green flag racing. We are back to green flag racing. Cody Lamas leads him down. And Cole Daly immediately pops out to try to get under his teammate for the lead. Cole has no drafting help unless he had the good run. Apparently he did. He gets down there. We'll see back here. Any cars off the pace already? A looks of it, it might just be 24. Might be on the way. Four's got his damage prepared. Wouldn't think Silver Fox has much damage, so these guys may be up to speed. Maybe Dion Scott is up to speed. These three back here are not. Sky Commons, he might be off the pace. Yeah, he might not be off the pace. Maybe Chris Watt, maybe he's just a bit faster. At the front, we still have a mighty big pack. Sean Gallagher is the back of this pack, so 12 car pack here. New change leaders at the front. Dylan Poteet has now scooted his way to the lead. He's got Madison Siebert helping him. Now Siebert the lone female in this race now. Sky Commons looks to be up to speed. He's trying to catch the draft to the back of his pack. So we'll see what happens with him later on. These guys, they're already getting three wide again. Everybody else seems to be off the pace except for Sky Commons. And Madison Sieber makes the swift swap down to the inside. Poti leads the lap, but Sieber will take the lead. Oh, contact! Oh, Sieber on the inside line, but she still holds the lead. 
She lost a lot of speed, so Preston Plord will get by for the lead, and she'll slow up the middle line. Poteet will get back to the inside line. Uh-oh, Seth was peeking inside, and no contact! Oh, Galligan is around! Spin up and turn! Seth Cole, Cody Lamas, Chris Washer, James Silverfox, Charles Sanford, Sky Commons on his lid. How many made it through? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, we might end up with only eleven cars to finish out this race. Sean Gallagher might be able to continue. Sorry, folks, for all the early wrecking dwindling the field down, but Tr looks like Charles Sanford, Silver Fox, Lamas, Sky Commons, and Chris Washer might be the only. We'll get out of the might end up at leaving the race. So we might end up only with a few cars left to finish out this race. As I said, a long event here, so we'll see if these guys are going to make any pit stops here. By the looks of it, they're on the inside, so they might be making pit stops. <coughs> yeah, there's some cars are electing the pit. Front four will not pit. And by the looks of it, just might be Madison Sieber, Alex Tanker, and James Qualls. With Seth Cole and Sean Galligan. Let's see what the strategy is for the one in the 98. Again, I apologize for all the wrecking, folks. I'm, I'll, I'll increase the drafting distance so that no wrecks will happen. M not as many, anyway. Oh, and it'll contact with Qualls in the 98 and gas and go for the 98. He'll get out ahead of the 1. I think the 1 might be trying to get some damage repaired from uh, cutting down into the bottom there. Qualls, he has a bit of left side damage, so he was involved. Galligan trying to get the damage fixed. He's got the damage fixed. He's away. So is the 11. And it looks like Seth Cole, he's retired from the race. So we'll just have 12 cars to finish this race. And uh, so now that the cars have mostly just gotten gas and goes to re and to repair damage, we're going to go ahead and take a look back and see what happened to bring out the second caution of the day here at Daytona. All right, we're going to take a look here. Pinpoint what exactly happened here with Sean Galligan. Seth Cole came down... What exactly brought out this caution? Oh, Seth Cole got into Alex Tanker, which sent him down into Galligan, and just couldn't hang on to it. No contact for Sieber. And Galligan's going to slam down into the 17. Cole Daly did a good job avoiding that. Oh, Justin Perry. Just snuck by. But is he going to get Galligan? No, he'll sneak by. And then just... Three more cars pile up into the high side here. Qualls, Seth Cole, and Cody Lamas. They'll get away. So another time, Rex. Dougie Shears got by clean. Now the deal is, did Deion Scott get by clean? Yes, he did. And now Chris Washer did not. And he got loose, slammed right into the back of the 48. Now what's... Oh, the 17... Must have got hit by the 41. Oh, driver's side, too. He's going to take a ride down in there on his backside. End up back on his roof. And then here, how did Charles Sanford get into this myth? I think he may have gotten into Silver. Yeah, he, he was right behind Silver Fox. Just nowhere to go for Sanford. Sanford. So Sanford, and that's how he got involved. Man, oh, man. Tough breaks for a lot of drivers here. We still were in contention to try to make something happen and have this wreck just calm down a bit and let everybody else by, but wrong place at the wrong time for a lot of drivers. We're going to take no onboards this time, just saving a little bit of time. We're going to get cars back to the green flag, and uh, we'll take it back to the restart here on Fox. Lights are out of top of the pace. Garmin's we're going to get back to green with four, at lap 14 to 50. That'll give us 46, seven laps to go. Cars out of the race after that incident. Seth Cole, Charles Sanford, Cody Lamas. 
James Silver Fox, Chris Washer, and Sky Common. So lots of cars out of the race now. We're down to 12, folks. Should be no more wrecking, so it'll just be good old-fashioned racing for the next 47 laps. So we'll take a lot of commercial breaks in between. Here's how they're going to line up for the restart. Preston Plord is the leader. Dylan Poteet is second. Third is Michael Hegnall. Fourth is Dylan Young. Fifth is Cold Valley. Sixth is Dougie Shear. Seventh, Dion Scott. Eighth is Justin Perry. Ninth is Alex Tanker. Tenth, Madison Siebert. Eleventh, James Qualls. And twelfth will be Sean Galligan. These two, the only two involved in the wreck, uh, only two that, will, that were involved in the wreck, will continue, that will continue on. So I'm only expecting 10 cars to be up to speed. Hopefully, no more wrecking. So here we go. Preston implored. We'll lead him down to the green with 47 laps to go. Here we go. <clears throat> and oh, he got a good jump there on the start, and Dylan Poti was caught napping. And that's gonna send that's gonna burn Poti because Hegdahl's gonna go to the inside and get the go for second. As for drivers being off the pace, it might just be just be Sean Galligan. Unless he can just stay in the draft. Staying with the pack, it looks like, but there's a bit of a gap forming now. From being 190 at the end, yeah, I think Galligan, yeah, Galligan's off the pace. 181 compared to 187 and 185. Yeah, Galligan will be the only car off the pace. No contact between Tanker and Scott. Come on, the front, it is Preston Floor getting help from the 55 of Hegdahl. Eggdahl is going to move to the inside. He wants to lead. He wants to lead this race. At laps 20, 30, and 40, and 50, we will take short commercial breaks. Just, just to maybe siphon out some time. Contact between the three and the sixteen. They send them down into Justin Perry. Perry have any damage? Not much at all. So we still continue. Plus the floor, he's gonna try to slide back down in a second. He'll do exactly that. Hegdahl's loving every bit of this. Eggdoll out to the front, Cold Alley out on his own now. Eggdoll's got no teammates. Ballard has no teammates. Daly has no teammates. Sieber has no teammates. Walls has no teammates. Perry. Poteet still had would have Sean Galligan, but he's off the pace, so Poteet's on his own. And the 36. And everybody has no teammates to help him. Michael Hegdahl out to the lead. Cold Alley in second, Dylan Young coming up in third. And Alley does not make any sort of move. Here comes the tw the 88. 22 wanted to go with him down further, but didn't have any more room. So 55 leads the lap. 8 will go to the lead. 22 now wants the lead. Dylan Young going to the inside of Cold Alley. Lots of history in this field here. Not just this is the first season of an 
Dynamax Series, Twin Peaks Cup Series. But a lot of history from these drivers here that have raced in all the other main series. We'll talk about them coming up in the next segment. But to start with one driver who is a leader right now, Dylan Young. Really famous in the NNCRA. Drives the 84 truck in the in the truck in the Oreo truck series. Drives the 30 in the in the Mobile One Cup series, and of course the two in the in the Snickers Cup series. And he's also got his own series, the NSRL, the NRSL Outback series, and the NRSL Universal Orlando series. Happy to drive in those series. Man, oh man, Justin Perry could not. He was on the inside line but couldn't get going, so Dylan Young's going to hold the lead. Three wide now, back among those drivers back there. Cole Daly went a bit high, so he might get the wall off of four. Nope, they keep it together. Dylan Young opens up in the little daylight now, but a car length back to Justin Perry. Justin Perry making his return to the NNS, to an NNSRA series. Gort's had the pleasure of racing against him a couple times. And now, um... These guys enter lap 20. We are now going to take our first print of today. And uh, we'll bring it back in uh, just a few short moments. So, be right back. Aerial coverage of the NSRA Twin Peaks Cup Series is brought to you by Twin Peaks. Brought to you by Twin Peaks and Goodyear. What we've learned, in, what we've learned making these tires and spires will be rolling to yours. Goodyear, more driven. Of course, a nice helicopter shot of the leaders. Michael Hegdahl has got a bit of a three-car length lead on Alex Tanker. They were four wide there for a second, as you saw. Uh, they settled it back out to two wide. A bit of a floater. There's a couple of floaters back here we have not seen move to the front. Like James Qualls, he's been laying back here. Same for Dion Scott and Madison Seaver. They've been laying back here, not making any moves. Now we'll continue our talk with drivers Michael Hegdahl. Got his own racing series. And uh, the brother to Eric Burton, who runs the Wrangler Cup Series on his channel. On on Eric Burton's channel. So, uh, pretty. So, the 55 Michael Hegdahl running for Michael Walker Racing. Making his. The, making his. Uh, well, I wouldn't say they in our 2003 debut. He's in the veteran shootout, so I wouldn't say. Dylan Poteet, really well known, vice president of the NNSCRA, has his own two series: the Mountain Dew Racing Series and the Mopar Nationwide Series. Also races in the top in the top, in the three. In, I call them the trifecta. Uh, the Oreo Truck Series, Mobile One Cup Series, and the Snickers Cup Series. Struggling a bit in the Snickers Cup Series, but um, I'm pretty sure we'll see him up towards the top of that as soon as time goes on. Also drives the 22 Caterpillar car in the Craftsman Car Series, which is a uh, teammate Sean Galligan runs. Uh, speaking of Sean Galligan, I think we may be creeping up on him here pretty soon. He's coming out of four. Drivers are just now coming out of four. So uh, they'll be creeping up on him pretty soon. Eggdoll leading the way. Next time around, if they've cut off four seconds there, they should catch him next time by coming on the front stretch. Alex Tanker here, more famous for driving the 18 in NR2003, but uh, making it to the 98 for this season. And uh, oh boy, here they come up on Sean Galligan. Galligan, is he going to slam the door on the 22? Inside line's going to get held up. 
Will Michael Hegdahl be able to get by on the high side? And that will bring the field up. 22's got a bit of side damage there. So 55 is now two by. Tanker and Perry working hard on the high side. They're trying to get by. They're going to do exactly that, working together. Good job. Oh, boy. Oh, Cole Daly! Saved it! Dylan Young is by. A lot of the drivers have gotten by the slower car of Sean Galligan. Sean Galligan now holding up Cole Daly and Preston Plord. Cole Daly did the smart move going by on the high side. Plord will go low with Sieber. And hopefully Dougie Shears will be able to get by momentarily. He's going to slide down Shears, but luckily gets to the back stretch. He's going to go by on the high side around Dougie Shears around Sean Galligan, so everything should settle out then. And then now, a battle for the lead, three wide. Dylan Young almost was three wide, but now the 22 slides back down. And I forgot to mention, Justin Perry bringing the, bringing the three car into this series. Running the Dow colors. Dion Scott here, former owner of the... He was the founder of the PWRL, which is now folded up, as far as I know of. And now driving the 36 for Tommy Baldwin Racing here in the Twin Peaks Cup Series. James Qualls, famous for the Castrol GTX Cup Series on his channel, Red Racer 1985. Go subscribe to that. Then you have him racing in the 11 this year. Avid fan of Joanna Long. Cole Daly in the 88 runs him, races on his channel. Um, uh, the HendrickCars.com Cup Series. Yeah, Preston Plord here has run many series across the NR2003 community. Now driving the 16 for Roush Fenway. Madison Sieber, one of my drivers, races in the Mobile races in the Mobile One Cup Series. folks had to answer that whoa tanker got turned down by the 16 it looks like sorry i missed that folks unless y'all saw it and i didn't see it that's gonna slow Sieber up they're gonna drop back a bit might be able to if they work together they might be able to congregate back up to the leaders and they have dougie shears here driving the four um, famous uh, for winning the first ever Snickers Cup Series championship, driving, driving for Red Bull Racing. This number has been under Red Bull Racing before when Casey Kane drove for Red Bull. Now it is with Stuart Haas Racing, and so is Dougie Shears. And, of course, Sean Galligan, famous for the, I think he's a co-founder of the MFNSRA, formerly the MFNPRA, whenever I, whenever I first came in here. Driving the 34, play it safe, CSX. Ford, and he's famous for the Craftsman Car Series, of course. So, a uh, little tough break for him right now, running 12th, so this is what looks like where he's going to bottom out here in the veteran shootout, but of course, this is exhibition. Doesn't matter. And uh, this is just basically all for fun, just to see which of the veterans here is one of the greatest, vet one of the ve best veterans to start out here. And of course now, here, here is the field. They have now once again bunched up. Tanker and Sieber are now working together to try to push their way back to the leaders. See here if they're gonna pick up anything on the leaders. Dylan Poteet running the back of the big pack right now. Let's see if they pick up anything here. Nope, they're losing ground, so it looks like these two 
might be done. Stick a fork in them. Uh, no um, connection to Red Doherty, but we'll have to see. It's gonna have single file among the top eight. Michael Hegnall now in the lead is now we've uh, caught a little break here. We'll take another quick commercial break. We're going to be right back here around lap 40. We'll see when these guys have to make some, maybe possibly make some pit stops. So uh, we'll see what happens. Like I said, folks, these folks are going to have to make pit stops. Pit stops are going on right now. Michael Hegnall, Dylan Young just completed their service with uh, Preston Plort and Cole Daly and Justin Perry decided to stay out. Dion Scott and Qualls have stayed out, so is Tanker and Sieber and Shears. Villain Poteet has just entered his pit stall. And by the looks of it, it might just be going for just fuel only. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Dougie Shears and Sean Galligan, of course, the two cars still off the lead lap. I think the lead cycles to Hegdahl. No, it does not. Let's go to Deion Scott. Here in James Qualls. Hopefully these guys will congregate back together. I think these two are yet to have pitted. Front four all together. Tanker and Sieber. Here they come. Big head of steam. Three wide for second. Sieber wants that spot. Will these be the four to settle it out, or have they not yet hit? I have not seen them yet. There goes Dion Scott. He's coming to pit. Let's see what's the strategy for Scott. See the strategy on the 36. Just be fuel for the 36. Gas and goes all here today. I guess tires aren't, aren't an issue. Scott is out in the way. Let's see where Squalls is now. On the back stretch with Tanker and Sieber. These three have not yet pit. Everything should cycle around to the 22 of Dylan Young. See? Nope. No one pits. We are st still three cars here in the lead pack. James Paul's leading them. So, and there's Seabird and Tanker. And you have Dougie Shears who's down the lap. Deion Scott returning to the racetrack. He's going to get pushed around. He will morph in with these guys by the looks of it. Morph in with this pack here. Of course there's walls in them. Caution is out! And a spin! Sean Galligan! Dion Scott! Justin Perry! Battle for the lead to the line. And it's going to be... Oh, Qualls just got it. Qualls is the leader. Tanker second. Third, Sieber. Fourth, by the looks of it, will be... Dylan Young. Fifth will be Hagdahl. Sixth, Dally. Seventh, Plord. Eighth, Poteet. Justin Perry would be ninth, but he's got damage to his car now. Lots of it, too. So now the pack is really dwindled down and uh oh woo Sean Gallandon doing a doing the slide for the crowd and now he'll transport to pit road. Lots of damage to the 34, so the 34 and the 36 and the 3 might be done. The 3 is staying out, so the 3 might be drawn to hang on. So we already went who who was in the lead pack but let's see here will the 1198 and the one pit or had they already pitted
We'll see. By the looks of it, here they come. 11.98 in the one. Have to come down and pit. They had not yet come down to pit. Will these guys pit again? No, they will not. They will stay out. The lead will cycle to Dylan Young. Deion Scott has left the race. So let's see what the strategy is for these three drivers. Qualls, gas and go. Gas and go for Tanker. And an extended stay for Seaver trying to get the car packed full of fuel. And the lead has cycled to Dylan Young. So, take another look in here and see what happened to bring out the third caution of the day here at Daytona. Take a look here. It looks like Preston Plord may have gotten into the back of Sean Galligan. This may be a violent hit if I'm violent wreck. If something awful happened as Scott came in and then here they go. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, hard into the wall for each of them. And Justin Perry just had nowhere to go. Perry will slide up into the wall. Get more damage to the car. So they'll slide down and avoid all, all other traffic. But Deion Scott and Sean Galligan, obviously they're done. As for Justin Perry, we don't know yet. That he will be, but he will hit me off the lead lap with um with the four Dougie Shear. So that's what happened to bring out this caution, folks. We're going to get ready, and we're going to take it right to the finish. No more commercial breaks. And we'll see what's going to happen here at the end of the veteran shootout. So let's get back to green. Lights are out on top of the pace. That means we can get back to green here. Shocking news here. Now, it wasn't shocking that Galligan, Scott, and Perry would be out, but Madison Sieber has lost an engine, it looks like. So, she's out of the race. So, we're only going to have eight, nine, car, eight, nine cars finish the race. Eight of them on the lead lap. Shears on the tail end. Dylan Young's the leader. Second, Hagdahl. Third, Daly. Fourth, Plord. Fifth is Poteet. Sixth is Qualls. Seventh is Tanker. Actually, yeah, just eight cars, actually, to finish out this race. Seven of them on the lead lap. There's your leader, Dylan Young. We're going to get going. 14 laps to go. Here we go. We're back to green. Dougie Shears is going to have to hope for a quick caution here. Maybe get back on the lead lap. On the lead lap to battle for the win. Now, the looks at the small field here, that ain't going to happen. So he may just have to settle for eight. Dylan Young leading the way. Here comes Preston Plord with uh, Poteet and Qualls. They're going to go to the inside here. Dylan Young decides to make no moves on Dougie Shears. Plord now to second. Poteet going for third, and the battle's on towards the back there. And Preston wanted to make a move, couldn't. Here comes Poti to the inside. Now Dylan Young moves to the inside. Plord slides back in line. Shears will lose his spot. Spot is Preston Plord trying to go for the lead here at Daytona. Will he get it? Not this time. Hegdahl trying to get around the four. He's going to do exactly that. Get to the inside. Who's been... Dylan Young's been quite a, a little bit of a floater here lately. And just been laying in the weed. Rust and Floyd, same thing. We've seen Poteet and Tanker and Hegdahl at the front. Walls, he's been a bit of a floater. So is Dally. But I don't know. Let's see if these guys. It's still anyone's race except for Dougie Shears since he is down a lap. So we're going to see what happens here. Tanker had no drafting help. So he won't get to the inside of the, of the 42. Here comes. 
Here comes the 16 to the inside. 16 going for the lead with 11 laps to go here at the line. Now here comes Poti to the inside, but he's going to get booted up high nearly four wide as Shears is going to play as a blocker here. He wants to get back on the lead lap. Shears may have to realize he just has 11 laps to get this done, but there's low risk of a caution coming out. Preston Plord's loving every minute of this. Shears now being hounded by the two Toyotas of Michael Hegdahl and James Qualls. Here comes Shears with Hegdahl to the inside. So Hegdahl's going to make a move three wide. Look who's coming up the line now. James Qualls and Cole Daly. Those two sleepers I said back there. Hegdahl to the lead. Daly going for second under Qualls. Dylan Poti heading up the rear of this, pack, of this pack here. The only pack. Dylan Young, Cold Alley on the inside, Dougie Shears way up high. Dylan Young trying to get back to the lead. We're going to have nine laps to go. Dylan Pote now moving inside. With help from Alex Tanker. Bar. Michael Hegdahl is the leader. Second is now going under contest between Poteet and Young. De now four, third, fourth is under contest. Now third is under contest between Plord, Tanker, and Young. Shears has now slid into line again. Hegdahl all out on his own. Preston Floyd and Michael Hegdahl have been the two dominators at the end of this race here. Cole Daly on the inside of Shears for, not, not for position, but just to get around him. Remember, Shears is up to speed, so he can race with these guys. Eggdahl still the leader. They're coming down. Seven laps to go. Tanker now going for second. Young trying to go to the inside of Shears. He's going to be successful in doing that. Shears slides down and behind Young. Sorry for the long pauses. There's not much to talk about here until we get inside five laps to go. Hegdahl has just done an incredible job holding this lead. Walls and protein seem to be fading. Just Shears is just becoming a bit of a problem here. Hegdahl doing an incredible job holding off these guys. Just as these guys keep racing. Shears has now been booted out of line as, uh-oh. Here comes Poteet and everybody else. Young and Tanker, they're gonna have to stop battling if they want some, if they want to get a win here. Stop Hegdahl. Young to the back bumper. Shears has slid back down and line. Paul seems to be losing the draft. Tanker moves inside. But Shears went with him. Five to go. Mm -hmm. 
no one, and I mean no one, has been able to touch Eggdahl. Cheers. Now in now second in line, but Poteet is now sitting in was sitting in second. Now Plord is inside. These guys have gotta stop battling. If they want to get up there and take down Hegdal. Unless Shears plays the, the, the position of spoiler. Shears now laying back now. Maybe just biding his time just to get around the 55 and maybe set this thing up. Unless Dylan Young and Preston Plord get a run. That's exactly what they're doing. For the last 10 laps, no one has been able to touch that goal. They're going to continue the battle for second. Lord now moves to second. Will they just lay back for a little bit so someone can challenge him? They'll battle for third, so that may give some room for Plord. Two to go. Plord now creeping up on the rear bumper of the 55. Shears is holding everyone back. The two dominant cars of the final half of this race are now battling for the win. Two to go. The battle is on. And look who's coming up in third now. James Qual. Does Plord have the speed to move to the inside? Here he comes. To the inside, Preston Plord. Someone has now finally challenging Michael Hegdahl. Battle is on for third. Hegdahl, if he can slide back in line here before Poti catches up. Oh, Hegdahl's hanging tough. Plord leads the lap white flag, and that's the white flag lap. Eggdoll hanging tough because Plord has no drafting help, but now here he is. Here's the drafting help. In Dylan Young. Coming in the form of Dylan Young. I don't know, we may have a heck of a finish here. Young not gonna make any moves? No. And Hegdahl still hanging tough. Young right to the bumper of Plord. Here we go, out of four. Here comes Dylan Young. Is it gonna be a move? Is it gonna be enough? I don't think it will. Preston Florence gonna win. Makes the move with one and a half laps to go and he timed it right. Preston Plord wins. Preston Plord wins the veteran challenge. Second will be Dylan Young. Third, Michael Hegdahl. Fourth, Alex Tanker. Fifth, Cole Daly. Sixth was Dylan Poteet. Seventh was James Walls. And eighth was Dougie Shears. That's it for the cars who finished on the lead lap. And uh, so I'll just give you a look at the finishing results here. Ninth, Madison Sieber. Tenth, Justin Perry. Eleventh, Deion Scott. Twelfth was Sean Gallion. Thirteenth, Seth Cole. Fourteenth, Charles Sanford. Fifteenth, Cody Lamas. 16th was James Silverfox, 17th Chris Washer, 18th was Sky Commons, 19th is Ricky Falcon, 20th was Pichu London, 21st is Megan Atkins, 22nd Ian Dutta, 23rd Andy Timmons, and finishing dead last was Drew Austin. Long race today, this is going to take a long time to upload, so thank y'all for watching here today, here a uh, production of the CGT671 here on Fox Sports 1, this is the NSCRA.
NSRA is solely owned by Seth Cole and NSCRA Inc. Thank you all for watching. Here are the NSCRA Twin, Pe Twin Peaks Twin Peaks Cup Series. I don't even can't even say my name on Fox Sports One. We'll hopefully join. Hopefully join us back here for uh, the first practice session later later on in the later on this week. Uh, as again, you've been watching here the NSRA Twin Peaks Cup Series here on the CGT Six Seven One YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching. Congratulations once again to Preston Plord on getting the win. Goodbye from Daytona.